Hello my dear students today we are going to study instruction cycle and sub cycle in the subject computer organization and architecture my name is himanshi choudhary department computer science and engineering kite group of institution let's get started so first of all we will see the prerequisites you must have the knowledge of registers before going through this topic because here we will be using the concept of registers in this video now let's define what is instruction cycle a program residing in the memory unit of the computer consists of a sequence of instruction this line is saying that that any program in your memory unit of the computer has many sequence of instructions in that now you all have made the programs and in that programs you always write the sequence of instructions through which you achieve the goal of the program so this line is also saying the same thing that whenever there is a program there are sequence of instructions next line the program is executed in the computer by going through a cycle for each instruction it means every instruction in the program goes through a cycle and that cycle is known as instruction cycle each instruction cycle in turn is subdivided into a sequence of sub cycles or phases now every program is having sequence of instructions each instruction it goes through the cycles now these cycles are in turn subdivided into sub layers now this is something which we need to learn that what is instruction cycle then how it is divided into sub cycle this is something which we will learn in our this video now every instruction cycle includes the following stages what are these stages fetch fetch an instruction from the memory it means you have given the instruction to the computer first of all that has to be fed that what instruction must be executed then second is decode the instruction it means computer has to understand that what is the instruction and for that it has to decode the instruction next read the effective address from the memory if the instruction has an indirect address now there could be the case that you have given a plus b and you have given the value of a and you have given the value of b it's very simple the value of a and b will be read and the operation you have applied for that that will be done now what if you have used the concept of pointers in the case of pointer there is an address at which that value is residing in that case that type of addressing is known as indirect address it means the value at some address and you have given that address so this statement is saying that that read the effective address from memory if the instruction has an indirect address next is execute the instruction it means whatever instruction you have given that has been fetched it has been decoded the values are read then execute the instruction now we will see the instruction cycle so the first step is to fetch and you know what is the meaning of fetch it means to know that what is the instruction now you have got the instruction you can simply execute it and if there is next instruction then fetch that again and execute that instruction now these will execute all the instruction in the program in the cycle okay that's why this is known as instruction cycle now but there could be the case that you are having an indirect addressing in between if you are having indirect addressing in between then fetch if it is the direct addressing it will execute it will come back for the next instruction in the next instruction or very same instruction there is an indirect addressing so it will go here in that from the indirect addressing the effective address is known now then it will execute the instruction then again normal cycle will be continued now there is one more step that is interrupt first of all we must know that what is interrupt when instruction is going on there is an interrupt in between it means that instruction is saying that first do this 
complete this then your current instruction will be completed that type of instruction is known as interrupt instruction now you have something to execute in between an interrupt came now interrupt is a new instruction previous instruction is on hold now this interrupt instruction has to be fetched and executed then after finishing this interrupt instruction the previous instruction will be again continued then the previous instruction is completed and when this previous instruction is completed then it will get back to this step and next instruction is fetched this is how instruction cycle works okay here we are having many instruct one by one every instruction gets executed if there is an indirect addressing then effective address has to be read first and if there is an interrupt that interrupt instruction has to be completed first then current instruction will get completed okay let's move to the next state diagram of this instruction cycle it means we will study this instruction cycle in elaborated form with the help of state diagram of instruction cycle let's do this this is the instruction cycle state diagram this you must understand start from here instruction address calculation now whenever there are instructions in our computer system in memory then the first instruction is in pc register that is program counter register uh, it is having an address on on that address the instruction is there that has to be fed so first of all instruction address calculation it means the address on program counter has to be read or calculated now we will get the instruction address after having the address of any instruction we will fetch this it means we will try to read this that what is this instruction next this instruction may have op codes and operands so first of all instruction operation decoding is done it means we must understand that what are the operands here what are the op code is, is there then operand ad address calculation is there it means if in the instruction there are some operands we must have the value of these operands you can take the example of r1 plus r2 now r1 and r2 may have some value so by the help of this value we can have the address of r1 and r2 we will move to next operand fetch it means we will fetch the value of r1 and r2 now if this is direct addressing we will directly go to that address and we will read the value of r1 and r2 okay now there could be the case that you have used pointers there could be indirect addressing if there is indirect addressing so that effective address has to be read first okay now till here you have read all the values of operand if that is direct addressing or indirect addressing okay then there may be multiple operands so this will be continued till all operands are read then your operands are read then later on you will do the operation of the op code op code is that operation which has to be performed on the values or on the registers so that data operation will be executed then operand address calculation is done this is for the result it means you are having operands you are having op code and that data operation is done then resulted stored somewhere that result has to be read so operand address calculation is done again to read the result there could be multiple results so if there are multiple results this will be the continued cycle because result is evaluated and the address is calculated now it has to be stored somewhere else because in between the result of any equation is stored on some temporary register okay so from the temporary register it has to be stored on the destined register now there could be indirect addressing over here also for the registers that will be done that will be read here okay if there are multiple results this cycle will be continued 
then next now on next interrupt is checked if there is any interrupt or not if there is no interrupt it will go here if there is any interrupt that interrupt cycle will be continued interrupt will be executed and then it will come back over here so results are executed now if it has to go again on this cycle it will go from this cycle again or the instruction is completed now it will fetch the next instruction now so this is the instruction cycle state diagram where we have elaborated that how any instruction cycle is executed now we will see that what are sub cycles we have seen instruction cycle we know that there are sub cycles now we will understand all of these sub cycles so first of all let's see the list of sub cycle first is fetch cycle then indirect cycle then interrupt cycle then execute cycle we'll be studying all of these cycles now let's see the first cycle that is fetch cycle this is the diagram which is showing the components of computer this is cpu under which various registers are shown with control unit then these are buses first is address bus data bus and control bus these components are connected with each other and the connectivity is shown with the help of arrow for example this control unit is connected with program counter register address bus data bus and control bus okay so let's see what is the fetch cycle during the fetch cycle an instruction is read from the memory whenever fetch cycle occurs first of all we need to read the instruction from the memory now pc has the address of the instruction so the pc contains the address of the next instruction to be fed so here we are having the address of instruction this has to be transferred to next that is mar memory address register the address is given from pc to mar this address is moved to the mar and placed on to the address bus through this mar the address from pc is given to address bus now it can travel to control unit and mbr now when mar is having the address that address must be in the memory on that address there may be some instruction that instruction has to be stored in instruction register ultimately okay so the next step is saying the control unit request a memory read and the result is placed on the data bus it means from mar the address will travel till here okay then it will travel to data bus with the help of data bus it will go to memory and the data will come back here and from here it will go to mbr it means uh, let's say that pc is having 1004 address and it went to memory at the address 1004 there may be some instruction and that instruction will come here and it will be stored in mbr now so address will travel from here with the help of control unit it will go here and the instruction whatever instruction at the address which program counter gave now is at the data bus and then copied into mbr and then moved to the ir it means this step is saying that program counter has given one address that address has traveled with the help of control unit it has gone to memory from that memory that instruction is known now now it will come back and then it will be stored on mbr because in between every instruction is stored in some buffer then later on it will be transferred to instruction register it means if program counter is having 1004 address it may be having an instruction just like add r1 and r2 so now ir will be having add r1 r2 because that is the data which is read with the help of control unit in the fetch cycle meanwhile the pc is incremented by 1 preparatory for the next fetch it means when a pc has given the address 
it does not need this address now it will move to the next instruction it means if you have made any program it may have many instruction first instruction has gone to be executed and it will increment itself and it will store the address of next instruction this is the complete fetch cycle now we will move to indirect cycle now this cycle is helpful when there is indirect addressing so let's see what will this do once the fetch cycle is over the control unit examines the content of ir it means ir to be determined if it contains the operand specifier using indirect addressing so if an instruction there is an indirect addressing is include then indirect cycle is performed okay so this is the diagram which we will understand that how indirect cycle occurs so the rightmost bits of the mbr which contains the address reference are transferred to the mar it means the rightmost n bits of mbr which contains the address reference it means this is having the address reference that address has to be transferred on mar register now mar is having the address that address will be uh, read by the control unit and control unit will help to read the value from that address which was stored on mar okay so the address will travel from here the, from the address bus then later on it will travel to data bus For, with the help of data bus the data is read from the memory and then it will go back to mbr okay so what happened here that mbr was having an indirect address of some register now with the help of indirect cycle mbr is now having the value and it can be transferred to ir now this was the indirect cycle now let's learn what is interrupt cycle now first of all you must know that interrupt cycle will only occur when there is an interrupt in the execution of any instruction this is the diagram through which we will understand interrupt cycle the current contents of the pc must be saved so that the processor can resume normal activity after the interrupt it means interrupt only occurs when there is an instruction going on in between interrupt occurs now the content of pc must be saved otherwise after returning from the interrupt the data will be lost and the instruction which was on execution that will not be completed so now let's understand that how interrupt cycle occurs now first of all the instruction address is in program counter always the content of program counter are transferred to mbr to be written into the memory now we have to save the current content of the program counter so for that we will take the help of mbr register now the content of pc will be transferred to mbr then the special memory location reserved for this purpose is loaded into mar from the control unit it means this control unit will help to store the address and the content of the current instruction so this mbr will transfer the address to the control unit and then it will be stored in mar register this is the special memory location where the current content of the pc can be saved now we will see the references these are the two books from which you can learn the subject computer computer organization and architecture first book is computer system architecture morris menno and second is william stalling computer organization architecture thank you hope you have learned something new from this video